Hey guys, how are we doing? So in today's video, I want to kind of pull back the curtain and give you guys a bit of more of a wide shot of showing how I set up this shot and showing how I organize this space to being the most efficient and most useful for me and, and show you guys all the different pieces of equipment, how I set it up and how I get this look to being how I like it. We're going to be talking about the lights, the camera, the audio, all of that stuff. And at the very end, I'm going to be giving you guys a little bit of a sneak peek at what is to come. Some really cool stuff that I'm working on right now that uh, that I'm really excited about. And it all has to do with uh, the this environment that we're in right here. All right, let's get into it. So let's start off with the lens I use, and this is my favorite lens of all. This is the Sigma 18 to 35 1.8. I find that it's just really versatile for anything that I'm doing when it comes to my YouTube videos or my client shoots. It, it's just my go-to. It's always in my bag. This right here is the camera of choice that I use. It is the uh, Panasonic G85 is the best camera in the world. Not really. I mean, the autofocus kind of sucks. It's not the best in low light. I don't really like using micro four thirds lenses. I, there's just a ton of reasons why it's not the best camera in the world, but it has a flip out screen. It shoots 4K and it gives me a lot of options. And Panasonic also has really good preamps in their cameras. So you don't have to deal with all of those little hisses or hums or little dings and imperfections that you might find with a lot of the other cameras that are in the same price point. So I have this microphone right here, the Rode VideoMic NT plugged directly into the, the Panasonic G85 through just this little extension cord. Now for a while I was taking this clamp and I was putting it right on this arm right over here uh, that is actually extended out to the tripod and goes out here and then I was putting the microphone on this but I just found that I wasn't really happy with the results that I was getting uh, because it was pointing up at me but it was also pointing up at the ceiling which is a much larger bigger empty space so that's where a lot of sound is just reflecting all over the place. So I was getting a lot of reverb. I was getting a lot of echoes in my videos, which I was not very fond of. So that's why I ended up deciding to go with a stand. I'm able to do all kinds of little adjustments and little tweaks to be able to give me the best results I can with uh, with what I've got in this room. And uh, I think I get some pretty good results with audio. Now, I don't know if you guys can see that very well, but behind the camera and behind this big light, there is this blanket that I just kind of tacked onto the wall. And the reason behind that is because of sound. I was noticing that I had all these little echoes and all these little pieces of reverb that were just getting in my videos and making it sound a lot less professional than how I wanted to sound. Right now I have a blanket behind the camera that is hopefully absorbing some of the echo, some of the reverb that is in this room. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. I have removed the blanket from behind the camera, so maybe it will sound more echoey, maybe not. Maybe I'm an idiot and I don't have any idea how sound works at all. But now let's talk about one of my favorite things about filmmaking, and that is the lighting. And let's break down the key light, the background light, and this hair light that I've got going on here. I really like this setup. So let's get started and showing you what I'm using for the key light. So right here, I have this LED panel that I'm using for all my videos and for lighting all my scenes. And just to make it so that it's a little bit softer, a little bit better, I'm using an umbrella. Now before using this LED panel here, I was using the Godox SL60W, and that's a nice big light. But I just got so frustrated with it because it was taking up so much space and this is a very small room so just to have this large thick soft box always in my way it just gave me less options because I couldn't really put it directly plush against the wall so then I decided to buy this thin LED panel that was this large soft light and even though it had a thin profile which made it so I was able to use it in a couple more spaces it was so large that it was emitting light all over the place so I wasn't really able to shape the light to doing exactly what I wanted it to do and because these walls are kind of like an off cream color light was bouncing all over the place and I just wasn't really happy and satisfied with the way that it was looking. So this smaller LED panel is a lot more easy to control. It's a lot more easy to manage. I was doing a lot of tweaking and I was trying out a couple different lights, but in the end, this light won. This light took the cake because it just fit my needs best. Those other options were either way too large, way too bright, or just really inconvenient. Now, even though this light is fairly small and doesn't blast light everywhere all throughout the room, I was still getting light in places that I didn't want, which is why I decided to place this like large piece of, of black foam just to kind of flag the light out and stop it from bleeding over into the entire rest of the frame. Now you might be wondering, what good does that do? Why do you have a large board in your way all the time? Doesn't that sound a little annoying? And it is, but it makes a huge difference. Here, I'll show you what it looks like when I don't have this board in my way. So now you see that I'm illuminated a lot more, but my background too is illuminated a lot more, and I'm not standing out nearly as much as I want to. But let's move on to the shelves, because that has 
all kinds of lights all over it. And I went really DIY with this. I just stuck some Christmas lights and I just gaff taped them up against the wall inside the shelf to just give that nice little orange glow. And I actually really like this for practical reasons because it makes it really easy for when I just need to see what's going on over here. I need to find something. And lastly, I have clamped onto this uh, shelving unit, my hair light. And this just gives me a little bit of separation from the background. It gives me that same glow. I'll show you what it looks like if I have that turned off. In reality, those lights that I have in there are really dim. They're really small, just enough to give a little bit of a glow to the objects that are in there. So I decided to throw up that little small aperture panel there and it makes a world of a difference. You guys can see that it gives me a little bit more definition in it. It really does feel like I'm part of the set because of the way that that light is kind of matching with the rest of the lights coming from those shelves over there. So that's the setup. That's how I've been able to use this space to make this particular shot. I'm really proud of how I've optimized this space and get Getting this shot to being the way that I like it. And in the end, it actually really doesn't matter. Ah! <sighs> well, that was fun. Now, you're probably wondering, William, what was up with that? That was a little intense. You set all this up, you did all this work just to be able to knock a big hole in it. What the f And yeah, that was a little intense. You think my landlord's gonna be pissed off? All fixed. But I have some really big news that's affecting this channel and hopefully you guys, if you wanna be involved, that would be really exciting. I'm working on building a brand new studio. It's not quite how I pictured it going. It's not quite what I imagined it being like, but it's happening. This has been a dream of mine since I started doing video production so many years ago. I finally got access to my own space, my own building that I'm able to completely change and completely construct being exactly fitting perfect to my needs like a glove. I'm also really looking forward to hosting events there and having workshops and all these different projects that I have in mind, even though it's really hard to do that with a, you know, pandemic. Doesn't matter, we're building it now and maybe in like five years, we'll finally be able to use it. I really don't wanna to go too in detail about this because I think I wanna make a whole video all dedicated about this process of building up this studio. Let me know in the comments down below if you wanna actually get involved and if you're looking forward to these events and these workshops that I'm hopefully going to be able to do in the near future. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already and ring that notification bell so you're getting those notifications, you know, do all that jazz. And I will see you next time. Take care.